Okay. Hi, Susan. Hey, Bonnie. How are you? I'm great. It is so great to see you. <laughs> I'm glad we could talk about yeah. you and your work. And I just want to tell people watching and listening that I have been an admirer of your work um, because of the uh, our introduction through Crit Lab and seeing your work there. And that's a space where we share our work and our our concepts, our our desires, our interests, our history, and it's um, it's just in, intrigued me because you speak about your work so well, and also. Um, the fact that you're doing a lot with um, performance, mm -hmm. that has always intrigued me because um, it's something that seems a little scary to me. And how, how does a person, <laughs> you know, start in with that? Like, mm -hmm. and you know, it's not like you started yesterday. You've been doing this all your life. You've been making art. You've been expressing yourself in ways that feel natural and important to you and about your life and um so that just really intrigued me and i just that's why i really wanted to start this platform where i get to know artists better and you're you're my first my first artist that i wanted to um to talk to and i understand you're in san francisco or in the bay area yeah. And you're going to tell us a little bit about what you're doing out there, how long you've been there, a little bit about yourself, and we'll just see see where it all goes. Thank you, Bonnie. It's been such a pleasure talking to you about art ideas. And uh, I think that for much of my life, I haven't had uh, the beautiful moments to actually talk to other artists about art concepts so it's like a uh, it's been a real treat to me to be able to be in dialogue around things like materials and its context in the the world stage and um, I think uh, I was happy to say yes to the this opportunity to chat on the video machine uh, because um it's actually been such a rarity for me. Uh, and you've asked such good questions. Uh -huh. And, and uh, I really appreciate that. It, it, got, it was a catalyst for me to think more beautifully and more deeply about things I've been doing for a very long time. Good. So I, I just want to tell people that, again, that are watching and listening that, you know, as we talked about doing this, and I should also say that you know, I'm calling this series Art Heads after you having mentioned that in one of our talks. But um, I just like the term a lot because our our minds are in our art so ma so many hours. And mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's true that you know we've gotten a chance to dialogue about the work and. It's it's a wonderful release to give feedback and to ask questions. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so much of what we're doing is in our heads, right? In our materials. So to have little moments in which we bring language to it, and I've always had a fondness for words as well. So uh, 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 the the there's a certain deliciousness to it. Yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you always been writing? Um, has that been part of your life from early so, on? So, yes. And let me go backwards a little bit because yeah. there may be three people wondering about like the Bay Area sure. and, and coming out here. And yeah. I've been out here since the early 80s uh, awesome. from, from college uh, in Appleton, Wisconsin. I had a short rest in Oklahoma City. Uh, where my sweetheart was my boss, and uh, he's remained my sweetheart for my uh, the remaining uh, uh, years since then. And uh, we came to the Bay Area never having been here before, not really knowing more than two people. I knew two people from college who were out here. So it was sort of a, an adventure and a leap of faith, but... Uh, uh, and at first I was very disconcerted by there not being seasons because I'm a Chicago girl. Yeah. 
Uh, but uh, I love plants and things that grow. And um, the first number of years out in the Bay Area, I was in the flower business. Oh. And I went from being in the wholesale flower business to having my own design business where it was actually uh, a little more esoteric than just the normal flower shop. We did a lot of uh, natural sculptural installations and uh, uh, did a lot of events. And uh, like if if I needed to do uh, holiday decorations for someone in a fancy neighborhood, uh, I would bring instead of evergreens and uh, red bows and, you know, uh, candy canes, I would bring uh, uh, birch uh, trunks of birch wood, and I would have them wrapped in lights, and I would have, and I did, make leaves out of uh, pieces of copper that I had oxidized to be a beautiful uh, shade of green. So it would be bringing in sort of a tree-like element, yeah. but bringing in the wrong type of tree, <laughs> and uh, but with the same twinkly lights, yeah. And, uh, you know, many moments like that uh, were in my, my years as a flower business person. That's fascinating. And would your clients know that you were going to surprise them with these things? Or, I mean, uh, they wouldn't know that they would be surprised. But So they- always <laughs> the best clients are, yeah, always the best clients are the clients who are artists themselves or appreciate art Mm -hmm. uh, and who are willing to give you permission to do what you do without constraints. There were plenty of boring Christmas trees, Mm -hmm. plenty, but you know, that's not what I remember. Yeah. 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 That's fascinating. Yeah. Were you able to, were you working at that time, making artwork, paintings, printmaking, any of you like that? Well, So I was making things like um, floral things that could be worn, or I made a whole set of wire crowns, and uh, I I was making uh, natural objects, uh, some of them performative, uh, some of them, uh, uh, you know, setting the scene for a party, but... uh, so yeah. the performance piece was in there somehow. That's yeah, how. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the creative practice and, you know, it, it was a very, it wasn't your normal flower shop. It was more of a creative studio whose main ingredient was uh, natural stuff. That's fascinating. And so um, that's awesome. And did the two of you do that or was this solely your your I had my own business but I also had a partner and we worked together uh, a woman who I love dearly oh, who okay. has since passed away and uh uh yeah we were a fabulous team for a number of years oh, that is fantastic mm-hmm. and um and then obviously you've left that business I left that and then I over a number of years ended up uh, being a working as a teaching artist and pretty quickly went from being a teaching artist to being an artist who teaches teachers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I did that for many years and was uh, particularly good at being the translator between learning and understanding and making of things. And uh, um, my teacher friends who know me uh you know that they saw a special slice of what was possible with thinking and understanding for themselves and for their their classrooms so well I love this this just opens my mind up so much because I mean it's a breath of fresh air to think Mm -hmm. that like you were doing this with these tree parts and I could just imagine you applying your wonderful openness to other possibilities thinking out of the box Mm -hmm. everything that you do and I imagine that people who have been in a um you know a construct 
that is supposed to be you do this 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 mm -hmm. and here you come and you're, right. you're you're kind of like saying yes we can all do this but we can do mm -hmm. it in yeah. any way we choose yeah i uh it, i had to i had to unlearn a lot in order to show up correctly for teachers and students uh, I, I was largely working with the um, teachers in in the Bay Area, but uh, in Oakland, you know, so in Oakland, it's a particularly frenetic, diverse, challenging, energetic, beautiful uh, community. And uh, uh, very few of the teachers have ever thought of themselves as an artist. So for them to be able to lead with art practice, oh. they had to be given strategies that were very approachable. So say you're reading some sort of book about history, or maybe it's um, fiction, but dealing with something, personalities and identity. So a good match to that would be to do rubbings mm -hmm. uh, where you put paper over a surface and you have a wide crayon or a wide lead piece and you reveal what's under the surface by rubbing the paper. So you are literally asking what's below the surface while you're thinking about what's below the surface in the narrative of the story or the history or the conflict that you're trying to um, to relate to and to understand, so. And this is the way they sort of brought their students into the conversation? Absolutely, because a lot of their students were just learning English as a second language. So if you, if you don't have a modality wow. that is an alternative to the the language you're 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 lost you're you're yeah. you're searching yeah there's no communication you yeah. know this is a way to communicate yeah yeah so that was the, very interesting yeah, but it but it also informs how i think about my art practice it's very um head heavy yeah. Like I'm thinking about process and intent and outcome and uh, the systems uh, that are maybe uh, overshadowing desired outcomes. And uh, I very much need my art practice in order to exist as a human being. Yeah. If I didn't have it, I think that... Uh, uh, I hate to think uh, of what my life would be alternatively. It, it's essential for me to be able to have something for my hands to do, something that's an artifact as a result. And uh, sometimes it's just 15 minutes in my sketchbook. And because of that, those 15 minutes, I'm a better human being. Yes, I know when I don't have time in the studio, I get very frustrated and very wound up and yeah. you know it it just doesn't feel very good at all so i i can yeah. totally agree. plus i think i noticed that in you is that you know this and and many artists i mean there's no like oh i do art and you know the i'm this person and the rest of I mean, we're we're artists always yeah so um it's not it's not something separate so you know, and and I'm like that's that's the soul of of what you know. I think you know you're you what I've recognized in you. Like that's you know it's the real deal. And then I think too, like some of the things that I learned about you, like from your history of you know, and your mom and growing up with you know, like we're going to talk about you know the the sense of care and caring and carrying but mm -hmm. the way some of the things that like i'd like you to go into a little bit which we only touched on if you feel comfortable doing that was you know just like you know you said your mom was like an anything goes and like this I, like i'm so curious about that atmosphere because mm -hmm. i think you know when you grow up in something that's maybe different everybody has different from everybody else but when you really come down to it but different in in a way that's you know 
has its own special flavor to it. Mm -hmm. um, you see, you, you're, you're open to things in a way that maybe a lot of people are not because you've, you've grown up in a, in a condition, in conditions that are not typical. Um, yeah. So I, I, I would like to hear a little bit like, I mean, when you're ready um, to, to bring that in um, yeah. a little bit about how, you know, cause now we're talking about how you're, you know, how you applied yourself to education and caring, mm -hmm. you know, I want to see where that goes. So, um, you know, it's hard to tell this story uh, with any sense of brevity, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a story that I want to honor. Um, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, so I had the resources that I needed. I had the comforts of shelter and, you know, my elementary school had art teachers and music teachers and we were free. Uh, we weren't worried uh, as much about uh, the threats of potential harm. Uh, we were out on our bikes, wandering, visiting friends, cell phones didn't exist, you know, we'd come home for dinner. Uh, and uh, it, it was, uh, it was beautiful. Uh, but at home, uh, as a young child, uh, with my two sisters, my mother started to really struggle with her mental health. Mm. And for years, off and on, she was hospitalized and labeled with terms like bipolar, schizophrenia, tons of medications, electroshock therapy, hospitalizations. She'd come home. She'd be foggy. Uh, but, uh, you know, somehow my dad cobbled together uh, someone to take care of us after school and, you know, somehow a sense of, I, I hate to use the word normalcy because I actually despise it as a notion. I think that we're sort of burdened by the idea that there is a normal. Right. I'm much more interested in like the, the spectrum of like nonlinear thinking is fascinating. Fascinating. And it's beautiful. And uh, after many years of being medicated and cycling through good times and bad times, uh, my dad passed away. Uh, that's a whole nother story. Yes. Uh, he was a person who believed in me and loved me. And so I'm lucky to have had one person like that in my in my upbringing that believed in me that I've I've taken that a long long way and that you felt, he, you felt yeah that. yeah but he was struggling with his own sort of hidden identity uh he was a closeted gay man and he died in 94 of uh AIDS and lung cancer mm -hmm. so like there was a lot of not normal going on in my household and when my mom would be hospitalized no one in the neighborhood delivered lasagna like you know if you have a heart attack or if you right. break a leg right. you know there was a whole network of care but if it's crazy care it's like um it's safer to stay away perhaps i don't know things are a little different right. now I think people are afraid they, you know, and it might be a little different, but it might not be a lot different. Yeah. 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 You know, had that been. Happening yeah. Today. So I became uh, very good at translating nuances Yeah. and witnessing when things were okay. And what was it that turned things to be not okay? especially once I moved my mom out here to the Bay Area, like Berkeley was great for her because you can be a weirdo in Berkeley, you know, and it has some smaller town vibes so that, you know, neighbors, when they would see her doing something that was concerning, would give me a call. 
And, you know, th there was a bit of a web of care for her, but uh, I couldn't sign on to a job that was like steady. Yeah. So for me, being a teaching artist where I could have smaller gigs yeah. was much more ideal more to being a caregiver. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I always had to search for those, uh, those that type of work yeah. and uh, always needed to balance needing to step away and out of myself into a sort of space. Uh, uh, scope of care for people around me, whether it was my son or my family or my mother or, you know, extended family members. So um, it was a, it was a beautiful, uh, but heavy lift. And uh, uh, in Berkeley, I worked hard to have my mom's medications lowered as much as they possibly could to be on that edge of being um, creative yeah. without being dangerous. Okay. Uh, we crossed over that line a number of times, but uh, you yeah. know, that was my job. So I, I really like that space. I like that space that allows for being as creative as possible. Well, that, that is such a gift to her that you, yeah. That. yeah. Because, um, I mean, it could have been more, uh, you know, just, you know, enough to like, just put that away, you know, like, let's cover that up. But you did, yeah. you, you really took the time and energy to, to, you know, respect yeah. the individual. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's it, beautiful. It, it takes more time to listen more carefully. Mm -hmm. And to ask clarifying questions. Mm -hmm. uh, but she could almost always explain where she was coming from. And it was like, oh, now I get it. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. I, I kind of get that to some degree. I mean, I didn't have the same circumstances, obviously. But, um, you know, being a teacher for many years, educator, mm -hmm. and, you know, I... You know, sometimes you meet people that cross your path and, you know, the words that are said and what's really happening, mm -hmm. are, you know, might be very different things. And it is important to kind of, and when you've done it a number of years, you can, you can hear, you can hear yeah. the difference. You can hear when there's something missing. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah. And. And part of that is that you've, you know, had to sense those moments that were scary. Mm -hmm. Then as she got older, you were able to use that as like, oh, here's the, here's a point of entry or. Yeah. Yeah. Know, point. So, and, and your sisters as well, you've had to um, yeah. kind of manage. Yeah. Care for. Yeah. And, and, and so, I mean, the time in Berkeley, that's, that's changed over the years with people, with school, with environment, socially. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that was, that was, um, I've only been out to, I was been out to San Francisco once, had an amazing mm -hmm. time. And yeah. um, I always wish that I was more in that era, you know, like in the hub of, of that kind of atmosphere. Um, but I was in the suburbs in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it, I mean, we're all it remain, like, right. It remains a community that is not frightened to protest. Mm -hmm. and I really appreciate that. And uh, uh, that if there's something that stinks, uh, people are going to show up and uh, the work is going to be done and signs will be in windows. And, uh, you know, there's there's a a, a web of care uh by the community itself rather than uh, an outside source being yeah. tasked with coming in and and fixing things and you know there there's a there are a lot of messes right now housing is a real issue mm. uh yeah there's a lot of need right now
and, and that fits with who you are and, and, you know, like why you're out there, why that feels like the right place for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, that's, so, I mean, that kind of brings us, I kind of feel like I'd like to share some of the images at this we point. We haven't even shared any images yeah. yet. We better get going. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to share screen and because we've talked about, you know, uh, care and caring and carrying these are great next images um to start off with so you can see this okay yeah it looks beautiful i see three versions of myself and uh these are self-portraits um they they're taken with a timer on a camera on a tripod and what i'm wearing is a mask i call it a mask that i made uh there was a a a book in the library an old book that had a beautiful illustration of wolf moss lichen uh and uh when you go up into the sierras there's a chartreuse colored moss that hangs to the trees at certain altitudes my favorite color, that sort of chartreuse green. Mm-hmm. So when I saw this illustration, I thought, oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was going through a period of trying to teach myself things. So at a local organization, uh, Kala Art Institute, I uh, took a class on large scale digital printing. So I scanned this uh, image that was in a book illustrating uh, wolf moss. By the way, my last name is Wolf. So it has a particular uh, humor to it. Not only is it a color of moss that I love, it shares the same last name. Uh, And it's used by uh, indigenous tribal members as a natural dye uh, uh, for clothes and other uh, woven materials. So I le- I taught myself how to make a, a large digital file and print uh, the media on paper. Uh, and then I cut out the perimeter of the moss and uh, added a, a, a head mount to the back side, and I began to take these series of self-portraits. So uh, one of the humorous things to this process is that if you're going to the camera and pressing the shutter timer for 10 seconds or whatever, you're also wearing this mask that doesn't have any eye holes in it. Yeah. So you're you're functioning blind and you're guessing that your pose is an appropriate one. Uh, so uh, th- that's what all of these are from. And uh, these were taken uh, in my living room. Uh, but I also took this mask out to different locations where wolf moss is found and took some natural uh situated in a natural environment, uh, self-portraits, wearing the wolf moss mask. That's awesome. And <laughs> were you were you particularly aware of, like, I'm looking at your hands now, mm-hmm. and I'm seeing some pattern. And then I'm also wondering about the clothes that you wore. Those were chosen, obviously, for... Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, the on the uh, the left, it's uh, pajamas, and in the middle, the pajamas under a skirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, the on the far left, the the sweater I'm wearing is the very similar to the color of wolf moss. Yes. Uh, so, and the gloves a friend had given me, they're like a, a crocheted, oh, very fancy gloves. Okay. So I was being fancy. Yeah. I mean, the hands are so, like, in the center one, like, really prominent, mm-hmm. or at least seems to me, it, it, yeah. this image. And so, yeah, it made me curious. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So let's look at your next 
So here we have a video and we're going to watch that real quick. Okay. Wonderful. So, <laughs> I'm gonna go to this image, but uh, yeah. So when I well, let's go to the next ones, and then I'll I'll stop share after. Okay. Okay. Great. So, anything you want to tell us about this one? Well, this was during the pandemic, and I call this series of images. Uh, uh, with and through the pandemic portal. And uh, the location is uh, uh, in a park uh, where uh, in normal times, there would have been many children laughing and playing. It's where a summer camp is held. Mm. This is a beautiful lean-to structure where materials are stored, but there's also this beautiful stage created by these doors that can open or be closed. And there's a, a, a bench in front of the oh, okay. doors. It was a perfect stage and no, no one was anywhere. So it was incredibly private. And, um, uh, you know, I think that I, I was performing in the space and holding the grief and the change and the isolation and the, the, uh, yeah, I I think that's amazing. You can I'm smart that you use your body to to feel these things. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've told you before, I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but this image to me says mm -hmm. so much. It's the this, this was also um the pandemic was still, you know, a thing. But uh, up north of here, around an hour away, there's a space, uh, artist residency space called In Cahoots Residency. And I had been there before and she, of course, had had like cancellations and had to close down the residency. And she just had gotten to the point where she felt like she could invite artists up if they wanted to come. And I was like, hell yes, I'm ready. Um, so, uh, uh, this was when I was just beginning, uh, my current body of work about care and carrying. So I was prototyping a bunch of things mm -hmm. like, was this idea, uh, as an artist about wanting to honor the labor of caring and caring, uh, did it mean that there were objects that needed to be made and carried or did it mean something else? I wasn't quite sure. So you can see that I sort of use some clips and brads to, to bring form to this stiff paper that was sort of like a big uh, burden, uh, but, but really um, uh, I was just wanting to sort of uh, embody the the gestures of uh, a heavy weight uh being carried right. uh, in this space where the the in the field where the residency was held so uh, I, 
set up my little camera on my little tripod with my 10 second timer. And uh, this is the result of one of those. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Should we move on or, or do you want to stop? I could stop. Well, uh, brief, briefly, let me tell the story of that one video that had the, the shaker. Yeah, that that's wonderful. And I love the seeing, you know, some people walking across in the right. back. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Just hilarious, right? So um, I did uh, 10 performances using these bags. And these bags uh, are made to haul uh, foodstuffs or landscaping materials. And they're industrial bags, very, very strong. And, th and they're unique in that their handles are generally used uh, for a forklift to go through the handles and then carry them. Okay. Um, there's a gusseted opening at the top where material it fills it. And there's also a gusseted portal at the bottom where the material would be delivered. Okay. Ingenious, right? Yes. Uh, one day there was a um, construction project in my neighborhood and I saw these bags lined up and I thought, those are great. And I watched them over the next week or so. Uh, and I saw the forklift, you know, it, it was actually like a dance. Yeah. A dance performance, the forklifts carrying yeah. these bags and yeah. splendid. So I had a friend, uh, a great friend, who was willing to do some dumpster diving. And there was one day that they were all tossed in the dumpster and I pulled with Jim's help, pulled them out and you know, there was an identifier on them uh, where they came from, which was uh, not that far away, uh, just outside of Sacramento. So uh, I used some of the bags just to be in uh, the, from the dumpster, but I also ordered a full set of, I think, a dozen of them. Mm. You know, they, they generally they don't sell these bags in fewer than a thousand so, um, you know, to get a call from them that they actually had some, I, I had to drive there and pick them up, but that's great. They're these fantastic objects because, uh, I was able to wiggle through the portal yeah. and inhabit the interior of these bags. And you could see, I could walk, I could roll, I could jump, I could, um, uh, to me, it was a great uh freedom but also a great metaphor for what women experience in their bodies all the time this sort of um veneer of it's a veneer of protection a veneer of uh shame sometimes it's like a um a compartment Yes. Uh, it's a blindness. Yes. It's a, it, it holds all of these assumptions about who's being merchandised and who's being transported and who's being delivered. Um, the, the performance sites that I chose, each one of the 10 of them, each one of them had stage-like appeal. Like one is a amphitheater in the woods where sometimes they put on theatrical performances in the summer. Another is a, a set of stairs going up the hill uh, where there's a fountain at the bottom and it's just dramatic, but mm -hmm. very few people are, are there ever. Uh, the location uh, that, the, that that performance was, um, I did it on Veterans Day. And it's up in the Marin Headlands, which is a national park. But um, there are a lot of old batteries uh, from uh, the, the war when on the West Coast, we were on the lookout for invasion from the Japanese. Oh. So there was a whole military installation there 
and uh, a gun embattlements, which is what this surface wow. is, yeah. uh, where they were on the lookout and ready. Yeah, they were ready. Yeah. Um, uh, now it's a beautiful view, walk along the ocean with the bluffs and uh, uh, there's an artist compound there and a marine mammal center there. And uh, But I went up there by myself and staged this performance. And uh, yeah. uh, Well, that's, that's so exciting and curious to me. I mean, I saw... I mean, there's some part of it that has humor to it. Like, I just want to laugh all the way through. But yeah. then I think, you know, we, like, there's so many things I do that I think are very serious. And then I have this moment of, wow, this is so absurd, my seriousness about this. And I laugh at myself. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, also the other connotations, like, that you touch on about body and you know, the feeling trapped or, you know, maybe those are my own words, but um, like not being able to get your limbs out and your hands out and to do. And um, I think that was one of my questions early on was about, you know, performance, about using the body, about, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a certain, I mean, maybe for me, it would feel uncomfortable or this shyness but I I was so intrigued by your interest in doing this like without any audience with with just taking yourself and doing this you and the camera and mm -hmm. everything else that you you know engaged with mm -hmm. so I asked you about body and um you know just uh you know how do you feel making these and what what comes up for you as you're doing performance and you know what what kind of history about body do you do you feel is important that you bring out or maybe it's not just about body anyway i i think it's part of my practice that is just honoring myself mm -hmm. and uh um very often the performance pieces uh where um taking self-portraits are during a period in which I have very little time for my own creative practice mm. and staging something and doing something is like a, a it's a it's validating and it's a release it's like yes I'm fucking here yes again yes. <laughs> and um uh the the video pieces uh, I did those because I really wanted to teach myself video editing. Mm. You know, it it, it seemed like um, the world was changing as an artist, and so much was happening on these machines. Yeah. And, you know, video editing was much more approachable. This was already many years ago. So it's gotten, you know, a lot more uh, uh, accessible even since then. Uh, so I, I was experimenting. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see what made sense for me. Right. What I could have fun doing and... And, uh, and so when you when you're doing your editing, I'm, I'm sure it's like it's just as important what you don't have in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We did yeah. Two things. We had one incredible minute. That was one yeah. minute that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to your next images. I've forgotten what they are. What are we talking about now? <laughs> so we've just oh. got the uh -huh. mm Hmm. Um, and let's see, we can go through quickly and see, so you can see what's up next, next, next. And if you like, you could talk about these as a group. Yeah. And then we'll get to the wallets. Let's, let's talk about the, you know, just tell us about your 
your handles, your printmaking, your carrying? So um, there was a proposal I needed to write a few years ago. Uh, it was for a very fancy residency and two people who believe in me encouraged me to apply. It was way beyond my reach. And I just want to say artists are doing this all the time, dreaming of something, mm -hmm. a residency or an exhibition and coming up with a proposal, finding the words that really honor their own uh, identity and curiosity. And as a process of writing this proposal, I realized uh, that what really resonated with me was an essay I had read by Ursula Le Guin, uh, The Carrier Bag Theory of Fiction. And this was uh, the year before um, some of this uh, work showed up in the Venice Biennial. So it was sort of like um, there was certain traction about this idea of reframing our cultural awareness about stuff and things. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Le Guin essay, she talks about uh, what if when early humans were beginning to become resourceful, what if instead of valuing the, the stone and the stick that, that killed, uh, we valued the Thing that carried the things that were most important, like the seeds, mm. or, or the the cultural tokens that were so important. So you had to create the thing that carried the things. Mm. Uh, and I really sat with that for a long time, wondering how different our culture would be if we were more peaceful for one, but also sharing our stories mm -hmm. with authenticity mm -hmm. and caring for each other. Uh, and I, I think we've really uh, are struggling now to tell our cultural stories mm -hmm. and to be aware of how outside of our phones, there needs to be a dialogue that is perpetuated amongst friends and generations mm -hmm. because uh, there will be a day when we won't have these phones, I'm afraid, mm -hmm. when we won't have this juice of information coming our way. So um, part of exploring the things that carry things I, I had to narrow the scope a little bit. So I began focusing on the paper, iconic brown paper bags, mm -hmm. uh, plastic bags, curse them, but they keep coming, curse them again. So uh, paper bags, plastic bags, and woven uh, bags. And in these images you're seeing uh, uh, the the, how I responded to the brown paper bag by printing it and learning over time that the handle portion of the paper bag was the most interesting. Yes. Because the, the how to grasp the thing that carries the things or how that graphically makes space for ingredients to fill the void telling the story of the things that carry things. So... Yes, I like that. The, the the word grasp, you know, yes. grasping the understanding and grasping these, the mm -hmm. barrier mm -hmm. for the, for the yeah. what's important. Yeah, yeah. And then so it's, just, it's just me grinding on an idea and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the last image with the hand around the pages, uh, those are 10 book covers. And this next year, I'll be working on the contents uh, uh, that will go oh, in these okay. books. Yes, yes. And 
It's like bookmakers, the last thing they design and fabricate is the cover, but I am doing things the opposite way. I have 10 covers and now I'm going to create the contents and uh, there'll be two signatures in these books. The one side will be content about care and the other will be about caring. So there'll be some uh, text and some imagery. Uh, and some of it will be scanned from my printed work and uh, be have a digital output uh, so that I can have a volume of uh, images to go in the books. When you say a digital output, how, how is that going to work? Well, you get a... a digital file of any of the monoprints, uh -huh. like say the seeds, for instance, um, and you scan it and then um, you use a um, printer uh, okay. to output the image. Like you can choose your paper, so it can be, a, it'll probably be a very poetic thin page of paper, but I'll output, you know, 10 versions of that image and then it can be cut and folded and uh, seen in the book. So the monoprints are beautiful in person. Yeah. So I'm hoping that being able to get reproductions of those in this book, yeah. that it'll sort of spread the beauty in a very tactile way. Yeah. yeah. And when we talked about these a little bit, when we all got together in the mm -hmm. lab, um, like, I just saw these as, um, you know, as negatives or, you know, scans or, as, mm -hmm. you know, kind of being. Mm -hmm. They do have an x-ray quality, yes. like they're seeing through. And I love mm -hmm. monoprints and printing and mm -hmm. that's what you do too. And yeah, um, these are those fabulous, like mm -hmm. prints of the, mm -hmm. hey, when I asked you about digitally, I, I mean, it crossed my mind, like just having this bag and then opening it and there'd be a digital image, like an actual iPad inside where we'd, <laughs> we'd see a video, that video, like when we open up a paper bag, mm -hmm. uh, that could be. And then you have this series with the, the wallet. Yeah. Based on your I, mom's wallet. Yeah, this is literally my mom's wallet and when she carried it I always like mom that's a stupid wallet you're always fumbling with it you, this little old lady it's like a disaster and then when she passed away I held the wallet in my hand and I needed to carry it and I carried it for 11 years and I mended it repaired it several times and Finally, it got to the point where I needed to just stop using it. So, of course, I wanted to print it. Yeah. Uh, and I also had uh, uh, started to really love the form of a wallet, which is sort of like a book cover, but not a book cover. Um, I like that there are two pockets uh, and, you know, the whole discussion of what wallets were not too long ago and what wallets are now like I remember when wallets had like that's where you carried your favorite family photos yeah. and your most precious little love notes sometimes were in your wallet receipts right. a credit card cash yeah uh, you know uh so uh, I think it's a very poetic object and uh I have the, a whole set of these, I have some right beside me, you know, uh, these fiber forms uh, from repurposed material around the house, the curtains or sheets or clothes. And I like exploring natural dyes and paint. And I also love stitching. The, the cuffs in this image are from my father's dress shirt. Yeah. So, this piece is mother's wallet, father's cuffs. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. So you 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 used uh you inked your plate, it looks like, and then you pressed them and, and ran it over there to do over it. Yeah, it's uh, uh I always ink up two plates, mm -hmm. uh, two different colors. 
uh, and uh, the plates are not thick plexi. They're just thin pieces of mylar that I ink up. Okay. So two different colors. I'll lay one down on the etching press and arrange the objects on it. And then I'll put the other color of inked acetate on the top and run it through the press. So now the objects are inked up one color on one side and one color on the other. Uh, so then I can arrange them. Right. So that this primarily you're seeing the ghost from the inked plate that the objects have been removed from. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, sometimes I think in, if you move forward one or two, uh, so that's the red version of the inked plate. And uh, then this is the objects themselves wow. uh, inked on both sides. And those are sent through the press with paper, objects, paper. So yeah. it's always a mirror. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. And to me, the mirror is, uh, it, it's a form of dialogue. Right. Uh, so beautiful. Thank you for telling us about that. Mm -hmm. This is a more recent, fresh off the press recent last week, I guess. I I was thinking there's so much scarcity, uh, water scarcity in the world, clean water, uh, that uh, I went to the iconic paper cup. Yeah. I mean, we all use water bottles now, but we used to always use paper cups and uh, I deconstructed them and I used them as the objects to be inked and uh, arranged. And uh, uh, it's a beautiful geometry, isn't it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. overlay and yeah. just the directionality, the sparseness, the color choices. Mm-hmm. And then this was uh, two days of uh, exploring plastic bags. Uh, the uh, bottom surface is, you know, just the, the, the thinner ones that all your produce from the grocery store gets tossed into. Yeah. Not so much in Berkeley anymore. You can only use uh, recyclable uh, green okay. plastic or bring your own. And this is exploring woven things in the same way. And there's a mirror of this as well. Uh, so this is really recent. So using an older print where the line in, in the background is from cassette tape that my dad had recorded of uh, Requiem. So cassette tape makes a beautiful inked line. So I had this sort of tangle uh, from that work and the the bold graphic black line on the surface is something I did years ago. I was learning how to do screen printing and I took a picture of some knitted fiber and then I zoomed in on it and that's I exposed my screen with the zoomed in knotted line of the knitted material. Uh, so uh, it's uh, the title of this piece is Remembering and Forgetting Craft. Uh -huh. So uh, the the fiber pieces suspended from the bottom are the, this beautiful, very raw uh, uh, sheep's wool that a friend, you know, friends, they know what you like. And sometimes they send you these things and it's been looking at me on my shelf. What am I going to use that beautiful curly yeah. angelic sheep's wool for so it really made a, a the third tier in the progression of yes. the tape line the knotted line and the raw material yep yep wonderful combination mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. i could just feel it like yeah i could feel the embossed quality mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, well, there you go. <laughs> this is my most recent self-portrait. I don't know, you have to look, but that's my hand in the middle and it's a reflection in the front window, oh, my okay. living room. I realized my hand was out there <laughs> and yet it was here. <laughs> yeah. awesome. So, 
Wonderful. Well, that gave us a lot to understand and learn more about you. And um, I just, uh, it, it's wonderful to see that you can go in and out of all these practices. And so I imagine, and I think this is true, you don't, you don't feel like, like, oh, I have to stick with this material and this process. And then I'm staying here and and, you know, now it'll be something new. You can weave in and out of all of these processes, however you like at any given time. I get bored very easily. And uh, I always like to experiment. Uh, I'll, I'll have a project that has a longer um, lifetime. Mm -hmm. Like the care and caring. I mean, I'm going to be stuck with that for a while. But there'll be many different ways I enter it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this with us. And did we do it, Bonnie? Did we do it? We did it. Uh -huh. I I feel enlightened and honored, and I really mm -hmm. appreciate you sharing all of this. Is there anything you want to tell me us about, like your 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 work, where you, where you? where we can find it or where you would like it to be seen or ideas that you have coming up or any, anything else you'd like to add into this. And who knows, maybe we'll do a follow-up at some point. Yeah. Well, I think there are many people who identify themselves as artists, artists who are not in the fancy galleries, artists who are, um, you know, searching for venues that have some wall space. And uh, I think that uh, it's a great sadness for the majority of artists that there are not enough, there isn't a high enough regard right. for the ongoing work of the, the legion of creative people doing cool stuff. Yes. And it's really a cultural failing, I think, for us. I think that it's my dream that there would be more community spaces where local artists would be, their work would be valued. And I mean, you know, local artists who don't have their MFA, but who have been creating, you know, just like bosses their entire life. Yes. And uh, I think that it's a sadness that so much of this work is uh, hidden. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that's that's my story. And, and it's one of the reasons why I'll fool around with Instagram or uh, video stuff, uh, just to try to broaden my scope a little bit. Well, I think that's 100% true. We, there's mm -hmm. so much great work being made and mm -hmm. so relatively few ways of getting it out there. And yeah. yeah. We, most people, most artists want to share their work. They want yeah. to, yeah. you know, and there's, there's these built-in systems that are really challenging and uh, yeah. I agree. Couldn't agree more. But I, I hope this brings a lot more people to seeing you oh, and your work. My my fan club will grow exponentially, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> and why not? And it, <laughs> um, so, well, thank yeah. you so much, Susan. And um, thanks for I the invite. Some notes on the once the recording is up. Okay. And I'll put some notes to where people can find you and your work. So, very good. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Bonnie. Have a beautiful evening. You as well. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'm going to stop.